We lived in the inner city of Detroit where Burton was pastor of Gethsemane Lutheran Church during the revolutionary movement of the 60s, or some call them the riots, the summer of 1967. There was a hot summer evening and I and our son Mark, who was four, had just gone with Burton to a hospital in the northern part of Detroit where he was gonna make a hospital call. And on our way back, we heard some information on the radio that there was things going on and gunfire and uh, it would be later that evening when we were home that actually we were watching a variety show and the song was this land is your land this land is my land meanwhile across the bottom of the screen were the words curfew everyone had to stay inside I remember the darkness the next day um, it was clear that the fires and the gunfire and the shootings were spreading. If you can imagine 10, 15 miles in this direction, this direction, north and south as well, a huge, huge area of Detroit that was all uh, burning. Uh, we could not have uh, gone outside. Turns out I was eight and a half months pregnant and there was no way that I would have been able to get to the hospital. So Concordia College in Ann Arbor, Michigan opened its doors to refugees, anyone who wanted to come. We decided we would take the side streets because there was shooting from the overpasses of the interstate. We tried to get neighbors to come with us and some did. The um, concept of not wanting to leave one's home during a time like that became very real to me because some people simply wanted to stay. But some of us, some of the teachers at Gethsemane School, connected to the church, went to Ann Arbor. Mark and I stayed there while Burton returned to the city where he and some of the other men were able to uh, take care of people in the neighborhood during the night. A few days later, we went home and the uh, turquoise checkered curtains were still there on my kitchen window and the pile of laundry that I had started to do on Monday morning that we had left was still there. It seemed eerie because everything had changed and yet here was the same setting that we had left. The riots went on actually two weeks longer and I remember for the first time perhaps being aware of the discrepancy between what people would hear on the news and what the reality was because national news media was saying oh the riots are all over but we knew the National Guard and Army troops were still on our streets the guns were pointed well they were pointed at us the people in the inner city because they were protecting the department stores of financial institutions it was um, just a couple of weeks later when uh, there was a fire on our alley and the fire trucks came but because the trucks the pumps were also worn out after those many many days of fighting fires the pumps wouldn't work and here the fire was out of control um, I realized very soon that the garage might catch another garage and another garage and pretty soon the fire coming up the fence toward our white frame house and the white frame church that was just a few yards away. I went in the house and woke up our four-year-old Mark and got him outside. Well, soon the pumps did work, but the lingering effects after a disaster like that go on not only for weeks, but of course for years. As one goes back now to Detroit, the neighborhood is there there are more guns, there are more drugs, but there are still the neighbors, the wonderful neighbors, some who remember us to this day. Joel, still in the womb, was due in August, but he didn't come until September 8th of that year. His birth story goes, he wasn't too sure he wanted to come. Now he's all grown up and uh, he organizes people around making music today in a wonderful way. But it was that September, just two weeks after the birth of Joel, that my community organizing days began. I started a kind of preschool in our house, yeah, just a couple weeks after Joel was born, for son Mark and the children of the teachers 
and also the daughter of the woman down at the corner, um, welfare mom, to whom everybody in the neighborhood seemed to turn to find out how to raise children. Not only did I start that preschool two days a week, but Burton and I began to walk around the neighborhood and see who was there. Uh, we organized around our block and around the alley that was in the middle of the block because that's where many of the concerns, the fires, the dangers were. Uh, 28th Street and 30th Street. There was no 29th Street for some reason. But we went door to door and we got to know people. It, it, um, it was a matter of gathering people. We did have meetings at the church, but we knew, of course, that not everyone would come. So we made maps and started a block club newsletter in which we uh, got people's names and helped people know each other, even if some didn't come to meetings. And it was true that we did know each other. We knew about each other and formed a network so that the next spring, 1968, when Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated and the riots came again, this time because we knew each other, we didn't have to kill each other. The uh, broader community, the suburbs of Detroit, after the first riots, uh, went through a kind of time of fear. They hadn't experienced what we had experienced, but they had watched it. And they would drive through the streets, kind of like looking at the animals in the zoo. The stories in the newspapers were about them and they were having to go to a psychologist because they were so concerned. And I thought, what about the people here who have lost their homes or have lost family members? What, ab what about them? Um, so one day I called up the Detroit Free Press and said, would you like to do a story on the people in the neighborhood? Uh, we weren't just people that you drive by, call they, them. And they said, yeah, we'll come out. So I gathered everybody I could, some people from the church, neighbors from the street. Um, and the newspaper ca uh, reporter came, and she was sitting there talking with us. And pretty soon uh, the uh, male woman came by, and she came in and sat down and talked for a while. And, and all sorts of people just kind of dropped in. Well, if you would believe this, uh, there was a full page story in the, in the Detroit paper the voices from the people in the inner city. No longer would we simply be someone that other people got angst about, uh, but we could tell our own stories. And so we continued to foster relationships with the media so that these stories could be told. We called it a block club, but really it wasn't in the sense of protecting ourselves and keeping other people out. It was a block club organization so we could include everyone and people could know one another and so that we could indeed uh, create a place of community. And that work went on for years. We had jobs to tackle. We decided that next year to uh, tear down some of the garages in the alley which weren't being used anymore, in which indeed were fire traps. And with this relationship with Concordia College, in fact, pairs of students had been coming in to live in our parsonage home with us on weekends and, and to do works of organizing and creating a coffee house and so on. So in the spring, early spring, we decided we would invite all sorts of students to come down from the college and help us tear down uh, garages and work with community people. It turned out that there was a snowstorm. We had to postpone it a while, which was probably good because that gave us a couple more weeks and Burton and others were able to arrange with the city to come and pick up all our debris uh, that we had torn down. So we were able to establish some kind of power. Um, the uh, neighborhood cleanup went well uh, and the community organizing went on. We continued to have meetings, uh, continued to organize, continued to know these wonderful, wonderful people, some of whom are friends of ours to this day. Um, our son Kirk, our third son, would be born in the city in 1969. Um, actually, he was baptized outdoors in the community on a Wednesday evening uh, church service night and children came and dogs came and it just seemed the perfect place to have outside on a summer night a baptism celebrating uh, not only uh, new life but life in community. Uh, the way that Christ creates us into a community so that we can 
uh, be different together.